Space Harrier on the ZX Spectrum, the actual super scaling Sega arcade game. Yes, believe it or not, Elite converted this to the Specky back in 86. And just to spoil it, it's a pretty good conversion, all things considered. And it was converted to practically every home system under the sun, and it would seem it was quite well received on uh, most of those systems, actually. And it was, of course, a huge success in the arcades and made Sega a whole bunch of shiny money. And Japanese Game Machine listed Space Harrier as being the top-grossing title in its January 1986 issue. And the artwork created for the arcade flyer for the game looks amazing. Now, Moby Games credits Yoshinobu Iwai as the uh, creator, but I think he only created additional art for some of the Japanese home releases. But I haven't really found much info about this, so if you know who made this amazing piece of art, please make a comment. The arcade game was released in 1986 and uh, was developed by Sega's AM2 team, headed by Yu Suzuki, who also created Afterburner, another Sega arcade classic. And the game made a lot of noise in the arcades all over the world when it was introduced back in the day. And it came in three different flavors. The upright, the sit-down and the rolling type, also known as the deluxe or the Taikan version which used hydraulic motors to move you around as you play the game. And I think this was one of the first, uh, if not the first arcade game that would offer this type of experience. And Sega later expanded upon this technology with Afterburner, of course. Now this, in combination with the amazing visuals of the game, created a guaranteed success for Sega. Some sources claim that this was the first Sega arcade game that used their super scalar technology, but I think the first game to use this tech was actually Hang On, released in July 1985. The super scalar hardware, just as the name suggests, was capable of scaling many sprites simultaneously at high frame rates, creating a pseudo 3D effect, and just in general, blowing people's mind at the time. According to the wiki, the initial 100-page design document for the game was created by a designer by the name of Ida. Unfortunately, I haven't really been able to find any information about this guy, but the game was initially supposed to have the player control a jet fighter. But once Yu Suzuki took over, he simplified things and also changed the jet fighter to a human to keep things more manageable within the technical limitations of the hardware. But enough of this, let's go to the fantasy zone on the Spectrum. An SD loading screen by John Harrison, and I think he also worked on the in-game graphics, but I'm not entirely sure, haven't been able to confirm it. Maybe Keith Burkill handled the conversion himself, not really sure. If anyone knows, please make a comment. So, here we are, Space Harrier, and I just finished recording it, and of course, for some reason, my capture software had crashed, so there's nothing recorded, so we're just gonna have to redo it, so let's just get back into it. Welcome to the Fantasy Zone. Yeah, there's no samples in the Spectrum version. Not entirely surprising. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure you could have made it work on the 128k Spectrum. At least as long as the game isn't actually running. <laughs> and as you can see, the game looks rather nice for a Spectrum game. The problem is, a little bit at least, that the sprites are quite small. It's hard to judge when you're actually colliding with these things because it looks like they are much further away than they actually are. So that is kind of a problem I think in the arcade game as well, to an extent. It is hard dodging stuff, but you kind of get into it uh, in the arcade and I think it, the same thing can be said for the Spectrum and that was stupid of me. Why am I over there? I'm not supposed to be over there. I'm supposed to know where the enemies appear, and I kind of have learned this because I did get to stage three or four, something like that. It's it's not a particularly hard game on the Spectrum. It's relatively easy, actually. You have a quite a few have quite a few extra lives, and oops, there's the dragon, and I love the dragon. I love his facial expression. It just looks so <laughs> really charming looking sprite. This. Almost looks better than the uh, arcade version dragon, I have to say. And this guy pukes out, I think, three or no, four projectiles, and then he just turns around so we can shoot him in the butt. And uh, he's not particularly tricky, and I only have five lives left. That is, that is a bit sad. We've reached Giza. And I was just turning around to check the recording. Oh, and another annoying thing with the Spectrum, though. You don't have 
invincibility for very long when you've uh, died. That is rather annoying because you have to get out of the way very quickly. Otherwise something's going to hit you. And I'm being a bit concerned about my recording so I'm constantly looking behind me. And as you can see there's funky stuff going on here. And this is my poor Spectrum that's uh, got some memory problems. I think it is the RAM chip that contains the, the video memory that is kind of badly connected. So I need to fix that, but I, I really haven't had time yet. So this will cause some weird issues with the graphics. It never crashes the games, but yeah, the graphics gets corrupted. But this should clear itself out after a bit. So let's just carry on and ignore the, the black uh, square at the top, but let's just see it as a feature. Let's let's just imagine that Adobe or Microsoft has coded this game. This this up here is a feature. Yes, yes, for sure this. <laughs> but I only got like one life left, so I'm pretty sure this is not going to go particularly well. But I'm not going to give up. I'm going to see if we can get to the boss, which I think is a bunch of spinning. Easter Island heads or whatever these things are. Or grumpy faces, I don't know. I'm going to try and get some points here because I do believe we get extra lives at some point. Not sure when though. And yeah. These things, I don't think I can shoot them. I think I just need to dodge them. And it's, it's so fast. So it's really hard to kind of know where they will end up. These obstacles are really quite annoying, but yeah. Yeah, sorry about the graphical glitches. As you can see, there's uh, quite a few of them. And it's, again, uh, issues with my, my real Spectrum. Because I am playing this on a real Spectrum using the fleshy, fleshy keyboard. And unfortunately, there is no um, autofire. So I have to smash the fleshy key here to uh, fire. And it's a little bit funky. And I think that's part of the problem because that uh, will have the memory act up as I'm smashing the uh, the keyboard here. <laughs> so, oh, r really? Uh, okay. Oh, there's another feature down here. I have a black box over my ass now. That's nice. I'm going to try and fix this at some point. Surely it should be enough to just, you know, maybe socket the chip instead or, or just resolder it a bit. I, I don't know. Or maybe there's some problem on the board. I think I should be able to fix that. Not that I'm particularly good at it, but uh, yeah, let's just cross our fingers, shall we? Hello, Mr. Dragon. Oh, God, I hate you so much. Ah, there we go. Six lives left. That's not great. Oh, I think we just got another life. Okay, nice. As you can see, our score just keeps counting up. We do get more points when we blast something. Usually it's a pretty good idea to just sit in place and wait for the enemies to fly into you, or your bullets rather. So as always, this is about memorization and remembering where the enemies enters the screen and when they do it and then just trying to stay away or shoot them in time like this hello these guys looks like gremlins i always thought that right surely they must be gremlins oh my poor firing finger <laughs> getting a bit tired <laughs> i've been smashing the the key here the fire key for quite a bit now oh god yeah um this game looks really nice for the Spectrum, although it does look a whole lot nicer on a CRT than a modern screen. It's a lot more forgiving with the blurriness and um, slightly, um, yeah, a, shall we say slightly fussier image. <laughs> really, the game benefits from that for sure. And the... The floor, the animated floor is a little bit annoying, a little bit headache inducing to look at, but it looks a whole lot better on a CRT. And as you can see, not every pixel is updated. I think Burkhill uh, is just doing that to save some some CPU time, not updating every pixel in the, in, this, in the pattern on the floor. And it works nicely. I mean, sure, again, it's headache inducing 
<laughs> but <laughs> it's uh, it still looks pretty nice and it runs quite smoothly. And here we have the funky fungi stage. These weird looking mushrooms or whatever they are. And also a bunch of these guys. Uh, okay. And more. No, that's... Oh, I thought that was um, gremlins. It's like mosquitoes or something. It's a swamp, this place. An awful, awful place to be. Yeah, this game runs super smooth on the spectrum. It's really, really impressive. I was so impre impressed by it back in the day. And I think I got mm, decently far. It's so annoying how quickly these move up here. And of course, all these sprites you see on screen are pre-scaled. There's no way in hell that a Spectrum can scale sprites in real time. These, these are just buffered in memory and are pre-scaled when they are needed. So there's never too many sprites on screen at the same time, I think. That's a bit of a limitation with the game, but hey, that's uh, absolutely no problem. We get a little bit of slowdown here with this double dragon here. <laughs> oh, here we go. Because there's quite a few moving parts here and, and also scaling parts. Even though they are pre-scaled, takes up a fair amount of CPU power. But this is impressive, it really is. 48k of Spectrum and it's running this well, I mean, sure. It's not as good looking as the arcade, but this is still impressive. And I don't think the Spectrum had a full 48k of memory available. I think it's more like uh, 32k or something like that including video memory, so <laughs> there's not a whole lot of space to uh, to make this game run. Let's see if we can avoid these annoying obstacles. It's so damn annoying. They are so fast. And when they show up in front of you, you can't see them. So it's really hard dodging them. And they are moving in slightly erratic patterns as well, so making it even harder. Oh, come on! <laughs> making it even harder to to dodge them. And I would have liked to be able to shoot them, but you can't. Let's give this one more shot. And there's uh, the uh, the black square, just for luck. Thank you, black square. You've got my back. I appreciate it. Oh, come on. I thought you were much further away, Mr. Rock. Sometimes there's no enemies in the game, and I think uh, the game is just preparing sprites or something. I I'm not entirely sure. But it's not for very long, so it's not really a problem. It's just something I've noticed. And it's kind of nice to have a bit of a breather before a boss or, or a new enemy appears. And I think this dragon is going to be toast in no time. Oh, more lucky squares. Even different colors this time. Don't feed the gremlins any projectiles after midnight. Okay, that went fine. Oh, oh my, oh, please. Don't let me just lose all my lives against these stupid rocks. <laughs> and I think it's the, the boulder that's actually firing the projectiles there, not the faces. Which gave me a bit of a surprise before. Ah, uh, we have the funky fungi stage. Let's see if we can just maybe stand still and not move about so much. That seems to help a lot, except when there's projectiles about, because they are homing! Ah, uh, God. Please, let's just rack up the points and get some extra lives, because that would be uh, great! Oh god, like, what are you doing? Oh, really? Yeah, it's really hard to avoid stuff sometimes. Again, I know I keep saying it, but it is, trust me. <laughs> get out of the way of the projectiles game, please! Back at the double dragon guy. Shouldn't be too much of a problem, I hope. There we go. Now a single dragon. A single-headed dragon, maybe, I should say. Please, give me a bunch of lives, dude. Yes. 
Not a single one. All right. Well, we've reached stage four again. Sea seal? Yeah. Oh, this. I hate this place. I really, really do. It's so hard dodging these things. And I'm shooting that dodeca head. Oh, come on. I don't get that. Why is that happening? I'm moving up and I'm dying there. I just died like three times in a row for no good reason. Because I am firing at that geometrical shape and it's not dying. <laughs> And I think I'm going to call it quits there because I'm having some sort of problems with my capture device today as well because it just keeps crashing. So uh, hopefully it recorded all right the second time. But before we end, let's have a look at a couple of reviews, shall we? Sinclair user gave the game 5 out of 5 and they wrote, For a while it is astoundingly thrilling and I dare say other magazines will give it all sorts of mega awards. I think that it may not have much staying power. And they also wrote, an impossible conversion, surprisingly well done. The problem may be in the gameplay, the graphics are terrific. And I think I may have to agree that the uh, long-term addictiveness is probably not there. And the arcade game kind of suffers a bit from the same problem. It's amazing to look at and if you're playing the sit-down version where you get moved around, yeah, I can see that adding some value. But gameplay is a little bit simplistic, even on the arcade version. Your Sinclair, of course, awarded the game a uh, Mega Game Award, gave it 9 out of 10, and they wrote, Clever though they are, at times your mono hero can get lost against the range of hills on the horizon and the rush hour surge of attackers. This reduces the playability a bit and maybe adds an element of pure chance that wasn't there in the original. And yes, that's another valid point that it is hard seeing what's going on behind the player sprite and getting out of the way of certain sprites. But yeah, I would say overall this is a very impressive conversion, which is fun for a bit, but again, long term, maybe not so much really. So with that, I'm going to say thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed this quick peek at Space Harrier on the Spectrum. And as always, hope to catch you next time. Cheers!